want to let you guys know that I made this bread all by myself. And today we're stuck here having to search for lost children. We're Thank you for the bits, Rex. We're the ones who are lost. And so we are, Emily. Zach, we may as well have fun if we're getting lost. She can you hear you. You sure know how to take your time in a time like this. She can hear you. Hey, I'm just gonna smile like this and talk to the person in my head. <laughs> see. Where are we trying to go? Let's look at our map. And believe in ourselves. First and foremost. Okay. We're going to what I assume is, okay, the community center. Oh, we only have 54% gas. Oh, good thing the gas station's here. Wow. <laughs> you saw a butt on Twitter and got distracted. I can't believe two people have been murdered in our town. And now two young children are at the center of it all. I just can't come to grips with it yet. Crime will happen wherever there are people. And that's why we have our jobs. It might be easier for you because you don't live here. These were people that I knew that were killed. And the murderer might be someone who lives here in this town. It's really depressing. Thank I you know. for the bits, Mara. But someone has to bring this murder to justice. Mara, you're Kintian. right. I know, but oh, Agent York. Sometimes I just think I'm not really cut out to be a cop. Not true, Emily. You have the potential to be a superb law enforcer. Potential. You can be emotional at times, but you also possess what's most important. I do. What do you mean? This motherfucker calling a woman emotional? A sense of justice. Justice? <laughs> I must admit, I I'm surprised to hear such a... How should I say this? Such an obvious answer. Called I out! you'd say something else. Obvious or not, I joined the FBI in order to do what's right. And that's what's important. I understand, but still, you seem... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I need some time to think. Whatever do you want to think about? Justice. I want to think about justice. Zach, she's quite the philosopher, isn't she? But oh. again, death makes everyone a philosopher. I can't... There hasn't been a single moment in the game so far where she has acted emotional. And he called her emotional. And I think Sweary did this on purpose because Sweary is usually pretty woke about this stuff. And he was like... My interpretation is he called her emotional and she had higher expectations for him. Like she expected better of him to be able to like <laughs> She's like justice. I I just want to I'm thinking about justice. Whatever. Like I thought you were going to say something other cuz it was a totally predictable response. You're a woman, so therefore you're too emotional, but not once in the entire game has she acted emotional. Like, at all. I made this bread. Mm. That's not me. That's not my chewing. That's him. <laughs> I didn't make that sound. Car wash? Money to get information from Jack. Hell yeah. Jack, here's the Ben Franklin you wanted. Give it to me. If nobody knew, they do not. They do now. Mari made this bread. Rise and shine, gamers. Let's bake this bread. Hey there, Benjamin. I wanted to talk to you. Have you heard this yet? I'll tell you another one when I see you again. <laughs> Was that backmasking? 
Zack, did you see that? It was as if we weren't here. I wonder what that was all about. Did it make sense to you? Um, so this man spoke to himself. And you're like, you see that? What a fucking weirdo. <laughs> He's like, did you see that guy talking to himself? What a weirdo, right, Zack? <laughs> Meanwhile, he has a woman in his car that he keeps calling emotional. Is there something you want to check out? Uh, well, either way, it doesn't matter. I can see you won't be rushed. I'm gonna go ahead, okay? Oh, damn it. Okay, that would be fine. And then I'll head over to the place that Lily mentioned. Don't take too long before you catch up, okay? This came out in 2010, 99 yoke. I just wanted to go inside and have my chance to... What? Yes! I got Genus Sponge trading card! Hell yeah! Oh, thank you for hosting, Elemental Water Angel. Welcome back, go Bogcoon. You got your food? Thank goodness. Bogcoon, I wanted to show you. I made this bread. <laughs> People are going to be like, we get it, Mari. You know how to make sourdough bread. But it literally took me like two weeks to cultivate the starter for the wild yeast, because wild yeast is supposed to be better for you. And, um... I, I don't know, I'm just really proud of myself because it took me so long to make the starter and then it, and then that's my second chance, I don't know, I just... So, Zach, this case turned into a multiple homicide. What kind of motives turn a criminal into a serial killer? Is it hedonistic? Ritualistic? Copycat crime? Sex-related? Cannibalistic? From the Bureau's statistics. These interesting ideas don't always really explain the real motive. They're just words. Phrases that the media uses to scare citizens. The spotlight falls on a mere 1% of all cases. Only the weird ones. You understand all this, right, Zach? Yeah, I, no I totally understand. No matter how bizarre a crime may appear to be, at the root, there is always rage and personal interest. Right, Zach? Most people simply don't kill for pleasure. How dare but you? That kind of common sense never applies to our investigations. That's pleasure Maybe killing erasure. Lucky. Or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. We end up working on those cases in that 1%. Do you remember, Zach? The first case we handled just after becoming a special agent? I wonder no, what let's the white trees another mean. time. I don't feel like it right now. I wonder what the white trees mean, because I know there's red trees and there's white trees, and I know there's going to be something really fucked up about these two things, and I'm going to be like, what the fuck? I don't think that's how you're supposed to drive. Well, you know what? You don't tell me what to do, camel spider. Have you ever played Subnautica? I did for like 15 minutes, and it's just not my type of game, even though I respect it as a good game. Famous bread. Agent York, I found Isaac and Isaiah. They're over there. Let's go. Thank you for the bits, Roxanne Mixtape. <laughs> Hello again, Isaac and Isaiah. I hear you're teaching Willie to do tricks. What's your secret? It's easy. Really simple. If he does it right, we give him a treat. A cookie if he does it right. I see. A very clever. So, tell me, you two. Could you perhaps tell me your other special secret with Becky? No, we can't. It won't be a secret if we tell. Thank you for the um, bits, Dora Vincrafts. I'm not telling. We promised Becky. Now that's a problem. Because I also made a promise to Becky. A promise to catch the bad man who hurt her. But I can't keep my promise if I don't know what the secret is. Do you see? Those kids' nails are way too long. It's creepy. Not that long nails she are not... She told us to give Diane a box. It wasn't that heavy. 
We took it to the art gallery and gave it to Diane. Is that all Becky gave you? Um, just when we were leaving to take the box to Diane, Becky called us back. She handed us something. It was small and round. She told us to keep it safe in our pocket and give it to Diane. Thank you for the bits, Althea Pine. And then you met Carol on your way? Yep. I took the round thing out of my pocket and we looked at it. And then she talked to us. We told her that we were on an errand for Becky. She said she'd do it for us. But we told her no, because Becky asked us, not her. We promised Becky to do it ourselves. So Becky did entrust the locket to them. And now Carol has it. Right, Kason? Huh? What? You were in the room when Carol took the locket back from Diane. I saw you with Diane in the art gallery that day. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was there in the room, but, but I was only chatting with Diane. Oh, then Carol burst in all angry looking. While Carol and Diane had their talk, oh, I, I just sat there this. like a frog. Yeah, so Carol took the locket from Diane, but that has nothing to do with me, right? Uh, Why are you yes, moving like I that? So. But from this instant, you are now a key witness in this case. I'm afraid you can't leave town until you hear from me. What? <laughs> Can you do that? This is all starting to sound a little like Alice in Wonderland. What? Which makes you Humpty Dumpty. Huh? huh? Isaac and Isaiah, thank you. I think I'll be able to keep my promise with Becky thanks to you two. How is Becky? Is she getting better? She'll come and help out at our store again, won't she? She'll come and play with us again. No, won't she's she? dead. Boys, about Becky. Uh, that's right. Uh, um... Becky is almost totally better now. Don't lie to them! But I don't think she'll be able to come and see you. I was told by Becky to keep this a secret, but she's actually a goddess of the forest, just like Anna. Why would you say that? She's in the forest with Anna for a while. Cool! Look, no! This is a secret then, too. Wow! That's why Anna and Becky are such good friends. <laughs> okay, okay, Willie. You're happy too, aren't you? The killer is those Emily two kids doesn't end in the up trench as a forest goddess too. I suddenly hate her. Yeah. Okay then, Zach. Let's go over what we found out recently about the case. First, Diane, the owner of the art gallery. She was out drinking with Nick Cormack in a bar on the night Anna died. Nick confirmed this, and so she has an alibi. But then we have what Nick's wife Olivia told us. According to Olivia, Nick and Diane not only went to the bar, but also went somewhere else that night. Do you remember where that was, Zach? Um... That's right, the art gallery. Before entering the gallery, Diane looked back towards Olivia, almost as though she saw Olivia in the dark. That's Nick's right. Nick's behavior has also become more suspicious by the day. 99 Yoke, the killer is just the if twins. Olivia is correct, then he is heavily involved in this case. Standing on top of but each other in no a trench coat. no conclusive evidence of that at the moment. The only thing we can say for sure is that Nick's whereabouts are unknown at the time of Becky's murder. Tour the There's no alibi for the crime. But that fact alone means nothing. So who was it that called Thomas to report trouble at Becky's place? It was the twins. It was cowboy hat guy. That's right. It was Quint. That's right! Becky's boyfriend. He went to her house and saw the tragedy. Blues, clues, well, blues, murder, clues. I'm embarrassed and mortified. Killer struck again while we were on the case. Hi, Smith 4509. We found her bitten off tongue. 
a massive amount of red seeds that poured out of the blood, and an inverted peace symbol like the one seen at the site of Anna's murder. From the similarities, one can deduce that Anna's killer killed Becky. We also found one other important piece of evidence in Becky's room. Can you remember what that was, Zach? The shoes. No, the sketchbook. No, I don't know. Yeah, a sketchbook. That's right. Okay. We found a sketchbook in Becky's room. <laughs> she had apparently written a letter to her sister Diane. It revealed that Becky took a locket from Anna's body at the crime scene. She also admitted to borrowing a pair of Diane's stiletto heel shoes. So Miss Stiletto Heels was Becky. There was something else at the end of the letter. It said that she handed the locket and stiletto heel shoes to someone. Do you remember who, Zach? Sasha? Oh, shit. I don't know. Him? Come on, no. Zach. That's incorrect. Try again. Who did Becky hand the locket and stiletto oh, heels to? The little kid. Sorry. That's right, Zach. And from what Isaac and Isaiah told us, Carol offered to take the items to Diane, but the twins refused. They gave them to Diane themselves, as they had promised. These kids are not For some so reason, worthy. Carol wanted the locket. She ended up storming into the gallery to take it from Diane. And when Carol took the locket from Diane, Casey just happened to be there. Is Casey involved in this? Or was he just there by coincidence? I wonder what's so special about the locket, too. Why did Carol want it so badly? The questions are mounting. Come to think of it, Quint, the first witness, has no alibi for Becky's death. We checked the phone records and his call definitely came from her house. Is it possible he attacked Becky and then called us from the scene? But everyone is suspicious one way or another. What should we do next, Zach? Okay. I don't know. Who's the most suspicious? Nah, uh, the little kids. I'm gonna say Diane. They have the same haircut. That's right. Becky's sister and Carol's enemy, linked to both Nick and Kason, the elegant owner of the art gallery. Yeah, she seems the most. Zach, that's our next move. We'll start with Diane. Because if you look at the cutscenes where the raincoat killer takes their raincoat off, they have a bob like hers. And I'm like, the bob says so it all. So you want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? That's right. There's just too many things that we don't know. First, we need more intel about the relationship between Nick and Diane. How? Nick and Diane meet every night at the bar. Let's the use bar. That. George, we'll need you to stake out the gallery. What do you mean? Wait in the parking lot of the art gallery and tail Diane when she leaves. If she goes anywhere other than the bar, you let me know. Emily, you take the diner. Wait for Nick and tail him to the bar, too. As with George, if he goes anywhere else, then you let me know. Okay. Thomas, you keep a watch on them inside the bar. Y yes, yes, I will. I'll be waiting in the parking lot of the bar. Once Nick and Diane are together, I will follow them wherever they go. What time do they usually show up, Thomas? Around the same time. Usually between 22 and 2300. Then at that time we do it, boys and girls. It's stakeout time.
I bet George is the killer. Hmm. No, he doesn't have Look, a tattoo on his back. We need to be at Carol's bar at 2200. Looks like we have some time to kill. We can go to the diner and see how Nick and Olivia are doing. Hey gamers. I made this bread. <laughs> Marjorie gamers. You know what LGBT stands for? It stands for let's get this bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. All right, it's 20 o'clock, and we need to be at the place at 22 o'clock. <sighs> I've read your tweets the other day, Mari. What tweets? What did I say? What stupid shit did I say this time? About your homemade bread. Listen, I'm very excited and very proud of myself. Do you remember? How many years ago was it now? That multiple homicide of young girls in that college town in Illinois. All the victims were cut open from the throat to the crotch. Ripped right open. During the autopsy, a second stomach was found inside the first victim's body. Of course, she didn't naturally grow a second stomach. One you of don't the know that. Belonged to someone else. As more victims piled up, there was one with two hearts, one with two livers, four lungs, different organs each time. Of course, those extra organs didn't do the girls much good, right, Zach? And they say too much is never enough. In the end, we arrested a professor at the med school. It's always a professor. They found the body of his daughter dead and the missing organs at his house. Do you remember what he said when we took him in? I was ordered to restore those deformed bodies back to normal. Was he Invader Zim? And remember who he said ordered him? An alien. Invader Zim reference! Well, of course, we couldn't arrest an alien, so we arrested the professor instead. Serial killers can't be caught by logic and common sense. I learned this the hard way. That first case taught me that. Since then, these cases just keep getting more and more complicated. It's a tough job. I thought getting experience while I was young would make the job easier. Dude, that was an Invader Zim reference. I don't know if you guys ever seen Invader Zim, but there's an episode where Zim is like, they're going to have a checkup. <laughs> like a school checkup, but Zim doesn't have any of the normal human organs. So he's stealing all the other kids' organs and replacing them with toys. So that he ends up having like eight hearts and 13 stomachs and two sets of lungs. And then of course the kid who's like, he's an alien, he's an alien. And nobody believes him. And nobody's noticing that he's stuffed to the brim with organs. And... <laughs> And so finally Zim gets checked up and the nurse is like, this boy is the most normal of them all. Look how many organs he has. <laughs> My squeedly smooch. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. If you've never seen Invader Zim, I highly recommend it. It's a really good show. We got to smoke to pass the time. Twenty-two o'clock. More organs mean more human. Exactly. Egg. Exactly. I'm here. Nick's still in the bar. Just as we planned then. I wonder what happens next. Agent York, you're really enjoying this, aren't you? I have to admit, I envy that. You're smoking in an enclosed car with a person who doesn't smoke. You're really rude.
Agent York, Nick is leaving the bar. What about Diane? She isn't here tonight. Emily, check that with George. George, can you hear me? Nick's leaving the bar. But what's happening with Diane? No movement. Tell me what to do here. Stay put, George. I'm thinking Nick will head to the gallery. Let's meet up there. 10-4. Stop! Copy that. They're looking at each other like they're gonna fuck. Agent York, it's Nick! <gasps> Sorry to keep you waiting. Thomas! Let's go! My boy! Okay. Time to play with the big boys, Nick. Do I just... Nick, you drive so slow! Nick, do you know that you're literally going 10 miles an hour? You're going 15 miles an hour, Nick. What is your life? Are you getting roadhead? Like, why are you going so slow? Okay, now you're going faster. No, you're going slow. Nick, you are a slow driver. Are you high? Are you scared the police are going to pull you over because you're high? I just have to, like, tap on the accelerator just slightly. This is exciting gameplay. If I remember, this was a super polarizing game when it came out. I can imagine that. People being like, it's just bad, and other people were like, it's a genius work of art. I remember my friend from a long time ago saying that she really liked it. Like, she kept trying to get me to play it, and I was like, nah, it looks stupid. No, I don't wanna. To be fair, at that age, I probably like uh, probably wouldn't have liked it at that age. But now that I'm more mature, I like a fine glass of wine. Nick is literally going 20 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm much more mature and refined now that I know this is a game is of true genius. I guess they make him go purposely slow so that the player doesn't lose him accidentally in this... Oh. Oh God, everyone here is so slow. <laughs> I'm having a stroke from all the adrenaline pumping through me currently. Yeah, this is a high stakes, high speed chase. Very exciting. This is so riveting. The intense music in the background, yeah, that's what makes it. And the Missing has all positive reviews except for one. Is the one review just being like, 
Lesbiabs. I don't understand them. Yeah, you kind of have to be in the right mindset to enjoy certain games. Just like how people like jo Call of Duty, and it's valid that it's a cool series, but I just don't like them. You know what I mean? AJ, you're being let in. Oh boy. This this mission is uh something else. We can't even talk to ourselves and have a cool conversation. It's just like who cares? Hi Pinkle Foo. I think you should ram him. Can I go to sleep yet? Is it over? Thank you, Moon Usagi. Thank you for noticing my cool makeup. Is when does this mission end? It's so long. I remember IGN actually gave it two different scores when it came out. One giving it glowing reviews and the other tearing it to pieces. <laughs> Oh, this game is not my style, but I'm here for Mari and the awesome peep chat. Aw, thanks for being here for me. Go to sleep, bicycle. Go to sleep, bicycle, brioche. And then, and color for If you're still here, you're supposed to be studying. This is the longest most boring thing in the whole world. Good night, Bisect Brioche. You're welcome for streaming, but um, make sure to take care of yourself. You just watch what people stream. Oh, okay, now we gotta be interesting. Is it over? Is it over? Women are curse on all the cars I drive recently. Agent York, Nick's getting away. Don't want the time to get serious. Hold on, you two, this might get bumped. Is Nick here? George. No. He hasn't showed up here. What about Diane? Any movement? No action here at all. Did something happen? Yes, a little. 
But George, something's different about you. Are you okay? Actually, I had a little drink while I was waiting. This is my first murder case, after all. I'm on edge, and I needed one. It was only a little, though. I'm still in control. No, you have to turn the knob. The Zach, knob. Nick and Diane are probably both inside. George, you're sure you didn't see Nick? Positive. I haven't taken my eyes from the entrance all night. Not that I don't trust you, George. But I'm positive Nick is here. Is there another entrance? Not that I know of. There's only one door to this place, and that's it! Well, I'll go look for one. Help me out if you can, would you? No, we're all gonna stand in the drain in the rain, drunk. Nope, everyone just stand in the rain. Ooh, is no one else seeing the sky uh, apocalyptic red? Am I the only one seeing that? No one else is noticing that the apocalypse has started? Okay, that's fine. I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, do me. It's cool. Well, if Nick was headed anywhere, it was here. Okay. Maybe he took a different side road from the forest? The sheriff says he hasn't seen him. Well, you know what I think I should do? I think I should do this. Oh, thank God, I can sleep in a shed. Do I need to sleep? Yeah, I, I need to sleep. I'm gonna take a light nap during the apocalypse in this shed real quick, if you guys don't mind. Just a light, moderate sleep. Oof, now I'm hungry. Guess I'll shove my face full of crackers. I better get something to eat soon, Zach. Let me shove uh, some crackers in my mouth. We'll be fine. Eat these cookies. Uh, they just waited back here for six hours. It's no big deal. <sighs> Cut an onion. Nice. Oh yeah, after midnight, the town goes all Silent Hill and gets overrun with giant dogs and zombies. Huh. <coughs> Stop. Can I break this? Oh, okay, here we go. Anyway. Here's Wonderwall. Don't like the look of these. Whoa! Hey now. Bullseye. Yes. You fucking got me with that shotgun, you ho. Nice shot. Yes. Bullseye. Oh. Nice shot. I guess I just gotta run past. Hmm. Do I just... Amazing. Yes. Yes. <sighs> what do I do? What do I do? Me. 
Jesus. Do they just keep coming forever or do they die eventually? Hmm. Maybe the door will open now. Nope. Hey, what the? Nice shot. Do they just keep coming? What's the deal? Hmm. Um... Hey, an onion! Bye, BB Spectacular! Hey guys, there's like, aliens or something. Nobody gonna acknowledge the monsters? Okay. Oh. Okay. You're staying here? Shouldn't you? Goodbye, Water Angel. Okay. Maybe he took a different road. Maybe I go around the other side. Here, but I guess they're just saying me this is where I should be going. Yes, amazing. Thank you, infinite ammo thingy. Amazing. Yes. Yes. Bullseye. Nice shot. Great. Amazing. Are they just infinitely coming or what? Bullseye. Nice shot. Nice shot. Yes. 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 Hold up, I need to heal. Alright, so I just needed to run past them. see any zombies? What? Emily, I want you guys to... Wait out here, I know. I'm not gonna fight you about this anymore. But promise me this. If there's trouble, then you'll call us in, okay? You might not think so, but we're a team. A team? 
That's what I think, at least. And I'm interested in you and Zack. I don't want anything to happen to you before I hear more about you two. You can face her while you talk to her.